want to get the best performance from your good old game. Today I'm diving into key tips to boost your project's frame rate and ensure smooth gameplay. Let's get started. Basically the first tip is to use static typing. Usually how you declare variables in good old is doing this. While this will work just fine, this can lead to some errors and also a lack of getting out the most performance. Because what happens when you do this is that Grout doesn't directly know which is the type of the variable. Because Grout will firstly read this is a variable declaration with this name and then okay we don't have a type that is going to be stipulated and then we have the data that is going to be storing. So Grout will firstly need to process what data type that variable is going to be having, in this case an integer, in this case a boolean, and in this case a string. But with the static typing, what we are doing is declaring the variable, and as soon as it is declared, we are locking the type and actually assigning it. So without doesn't have to predict it. And this calculation, of course, is going to be saving some resources. And even more thing about this, when you may have hundreds or even thousands of variables, of course, if you have 1,000 variables that have to be predicted um, by good out, that's going to actually be taking a lot of performance, whereas if you just define which is the exact variable type, you are going to be saving some pretty interesting resources. And as you can see, to just use a static type meaning it is super easy. Uh, you just use this symbol over here, you leave one space, and then you type the uh, variable type. Also, other pretty good thing about static typing is the fact that it will allow you to lock in the variable type. So, actually in good old, for example, this variable that is not static typed, its type can be changed. So, for example, in the ready, I can say, okay, score 2, okay, it's going to be equal to hello. So, now this is not anymore an integer, okay, but it is going to be a string. But if I wanted to do score equal hello this uh, would throw me uh, an error as you can see and uh, because we have stipulated that this will always be an integer so this also helps a lot to make sure that variables are used as intended and will also help us debug a little bit better our scripts then you have to make sure that unnecessary nodes are deleted and for this we are going to have two main usages as well, depending on your exact game, uh, you may need to implement them differently. So the first one has to do with animation. So for example, let's say that this was a coin and that, well, you can collect this coin and when the coin is collected, you, you play this animation as some kind of fade out. So probably in your code, you have some kind of lines that basically play this animation when, for example, the player collides with the coin. And you may think that that is enough. Enough. It is for just being able to play the game, but it is not the best practice for um, for the performance. So what I will do just here is to add a script, and what I will make sure is that this node is being deleted. So I will just go to the uh, signals, and over here I will make sure that I connect the animation uh, finished uh, signal over here to the corresponding script. And this also provides the animation name. So in this case, the animation is just called new animation. So I will say if anim name is equal to new animation, basically if the animation that has finished is this animation, in this case, I will do Q3. And I have just also added a code here to play the animation when I press the space so that we can try this out. So I will go to the remote, okay, where I see the current nodes that exist in this in this instance. So the only nodes that exist are my, my node 2D, that is the, the wrapper, the, the root node, and the coin, okay, and the, the bullet, okay. So we press the space bar, and when the animation finishes, basically the node is deleted, so we are saving there some resources. Once again, with just one coin, there isn't a big problem, but let's say that you have a platformer game in which there could be a dozens of... Uh, of coins that you you would be still rendering uh, when you have collected them unnecessary so that is why this is quite important and then the second thing that we're going to be discussing is destroying for example bullets um 
when you're shooting these bullets, okay, there are going to be some situations in which the bullet doesn't hit the object that is meant, for example, the enemy, an obstacle, etc. So it will just leave the screen. And in those cases, the bullet will just uh, keep moving forever, okay? So we have to prevent this. And how do we do so exactly? We are going to select our bullet and use a visibility on screen notifier 2D, okay? So this will create another bounding box quite similar to collision shape. So I will just uh, modify its size. And this provides two signals screen entered and screen exited so i will assign a script to the bullet okay and i will connect the screen exited so when uh, uh, this uh, object this node leaves the screen in this case we're just going to be deleting it so we're going to be doing something quite similar So as you can see, when it exited the screen, here the bullet disappeared. Let's try it once again. And as you can see, it doesn't exist anymore. Once again, you do have to adapt these mechanics to your specific game. Next, you can uh, play a little bit around with the V-Sync. So you can go to your project, project settings, and over here you can uh, find it over here by typing BS. Um, this is an option in display and window, by the way. So by default, this is set to enabled and you can take a look at display server dot vsync mode. And well, you can read here a little bit about the different options that you have. Okay. Because well, by disabled and enabled are quite straightforward. This one enables the option and the other disables it, but we also have adapt adaptive and mailbox. But well, both options, mailbox and adaptive, are a little bit more advanced, so I don't really want to get any deeper. So the ones that we'll actually take a look at are enabled or disabled. So in simple terms, when vSync is enabled, the frame rate is limited to the monitor. Because there are monitors that can render more images, and there are other monitors that can render fewer images. Images per second, I mean basically uh, more or less uh, FPS. So if we have this option enabled, the FPS of the game are going to be limited. Usually monitors that aren't like super expensive uh, are able to render 60 frames per second. So it means that your game is going to be limited to 60 frames per second. And if you have it disabled, basically um, your game is going to be running, let's say it's going to be rendering as many images as your uh, PC can handle. This can also be a little bit um, dangerous, okay? Because you would also be rendering too many images that the player wouldn't actually be able to render on its monitor. So a good practice would basically be to just uh, turn off the V-Sync and then using the uh, max FPS property with basically this function, you're going to be able to set it. So, okay, and once again here, depending on the exact vSync property that you set, but well, as, as it is stated here, you can disable vSync and then limit the FPS to a higher value. For example, I don't know, 200 FPS. And what happens is that when you disable vSync and actually set the target frame rate to be a little bit higher, such as 200 FPS, 240, even 300 FPS, is that the frame rate is much more constant. Because what happens is that, for example, if vSync is on and the target frame rate is 60, as soon as there is some kind of drop in the PC performance for some reason, there is going to be a drop in FPS. For example, instead of having 60, the player will have 58. And you may think that that isn't a big deal, but it, this can be really easily spotted by the player and actually felt uncomfortable. So on the other hand, if those FPS are uncapped, and for example, we are rendering 70 FPS, um, we are not going to be having that problem of um, rendering less FPS than the ones that are actually the uh, player is seeing. This is actually a topic that could be dedicated a whole video towards, so I really recommend you take a look at the documentation. So these are the main methods that I know in order 
to optimize more your good old game performance. If you like them, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Bye bye.